Education Minister is with us this morning, Damien Hines. Good to see you. Thanks for taking morning, the time Kate. to join us. Talk to me what you're planning to do um, about, um, I suppose, penalising parents if kids don't go to school. Well, look, this morning we're talking about school attendance. I will come on to penalty notice in a moment, but that's actually a relatively small part of what we are... Not what if you we, have to pay what it. we're talking about. Hang on. Just bear, bear with me a sec. So, we, look, since COVID... You're quite feisty this since, morning. <laughs> since, uh, right. since COVID... Since COVID, there has been an impact on school attendance overall, not directly because of children having COVID, but just changes in sort of thresholds, perhaps, that children will stay at home uh, with a relatively mild illness. And we've been trying to stress to people that, you know, the NHS guidance is you've got a mild cold, actually, it is usually OK to be in school. Mild anxiety, actually, quite often, it helps to be in school. And there's, there's very good NHS guidance around that. There's also so-called unauthorised absence which includes term time holidays. And there has to be a, a deterrent for, uh, for, for taking children out of school unnecessarily during, uh, during term time, because every day at school really, really matters. And that's where fixed penalty notices come in. The, the, the amount of the fixed penalty notice hasn't changed since 2012. It's been at 60 pounds for all that time. We are gonna change it to uh, 80 pounds if you pay within 21 days, but also make it consistent. Uh, across the country. Right now, in some parts of the country, uh, those, uh, those fines are used significantly and others really not much at all. So we're going to make sure that is a consistent approach across the country. But I stress it's only for unauthorised absence. What happens if parents don't pay? Well, as with fines in general, as, as you know, there is a system that you, uh, th that you go through. Um, if you don't pay uh, within the 21 days, the, the amount goes up. Ultimately, of course, non-payment of fines result can, can result in in proceedings as it can for other fines but that's not where we want to be i mean we don't want people paying these fines at all we want we want the children Whoa, to be let me just check what you're saying school. are you saying that if the parents don't pay eventually they could face prosecution so it, it look it's a legal requirement to have that's a suitable a yes, though, to have a suitable it? education for your child and that's yeah. that's that's not that's not a new announcement we're making no, today no, okay that's that has long been that's long been the case the penalties will be we have look the other thing to say is we have what we call a support first approach. So you're talking about uh, fixed penalty notices for unauthorised absence. That's far down the line. We want to be working with, with families and schools do an amazing job uh, having sensitive conversations, encouraging conversations with parents and with pupils themselves about getting kids back into school and back into a, a regular a timetable. And all of that is, is very, very good work and has produced results already, you know, last term... Attendance at school was materially better than, than the equivalent term the year before. But we're still not quite back at the place we were before COVID. And, that, and that's where we need to be, because every day in school really matters. Even missing school for relatively small amounts of time has a discernible impact on how children do at school, as well as, by the way, being with friends and all the other things, the other great things about being in school. So, obviously, every child at some point is going to need to be off school sick. Uh, that's always been true. But where there is avoidable absence, that's what we really, really want to bring OK, down. but just to clarify, Minister, if it is unauthorised access, for whatever reason, you've taken them on a skiing holiday or you need them at home and you've not told the school that they're going to be off, ultimately, if you don't pay that penalty, then you will be prosecuted. So, look, there is there's always discretion in the system. So, first of all, we've got a threshold for when a fixed penalty notice would be issued, but it's only that it would be considered to be issued. That's what, ten, ten sessions of unauthorised absence in a 10-week period, so effectively one week in, in 10, uh, then you'd be considered for this. Then, of course, uh, you would be... If you are issued the fine, then, yes, you, you do have to pay it, and that is... That's, that's a feature throughout our, throughout our system that when fines are issued, there is a requirement to do so, and there is a, there is a penalty for not, paying, for not paying the penalty. But we don't, want, we don't want parents to be there. That's not the point of this. This is meant to be there as a, as a deterrent because... It is incredibly important okay. for children to be uh, in school. We have some guests on the programme later on in, uh, who are calling for action after a report found 20,000 autistic students have missed out on 10% or more of their education. Thoughts on that? Y yes, so children with special educational needs, children with what are called EHCPs, education, health and care plans, do have higher levels of absence than, uh, th than other children and quite often require extra support. Our guidance, which today becomes, we are making statutory, uh, is, is very keen to stress, of course, and schools do this 
uh, that there is extra extra support required for uh, children, some often children with special educational needs, sensitive conversations with parents and supporting them through their uh, through 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 those uh, through those points to, to try and make sure that they can benefit as much as possible from as many days as possible being in school. How concerned are you? Uh, that um, ITV has decided to make a drama series like they did about the post office on the compensation for infected blood inquiry? Well, look, the, I mean, we talk about the post office scandal and the terrible injustice that has been and the proportions of it uh, compared to other things we've known. I mean, the infected blood scandal is, is like that, but over a much... Uh, over a longer period. Uh, I've met some of the people who've been who've been affected, who've been who've been victims. It is the most awful uh, scandal uh, that that we have had in in our country. I don't know what's going to be in the in the ITV drama. I think, by the way, what they did with the uh, with the post office and Mr Bates, I mean, actually, was quite an extraordinary. It was, it was. really it was really quite quite an extraordinary quite an extraordinary thing. Okay, um, we heard the Prime Minister yesterday talk about. Um, growing consensus that mob rule is replacing democratic rule is referring particularly to what's happening with marches and also demonstrations outside um, MPs' homes. Do you think mob rule is an appropriate use of language? I don't think mob rule is an appropriate thing that we should ever con consider to be acceptable in our is country. Is that what it is, though? We've got a, a representative liberal democracy, which you and I are very proud of and, and, and defend. There are some people who would seek to overcome that representative liberal democracy by bringing intimidatory tactics into the, uh, into the mix and uh, be, being outside people's homes. We've talked about MPs. It doesn't necessarily just have to be MPs, by the way. Uh, journalism is another very sensitive area of our, of, of, of our system. Bringing those tactics to bear is not... Uh, is not is far far from appropriate in a in a representative uh, system like ours. But is de defining those group of people as a mob um, incendiary? I, I think well, pe people can make their own judgments, can't they? From watching the judgment? from watching the television. Well, you have many you have many viewers, and they will all make their own judgments. I, I I I think uh, appearing outside. Somebody's home, whether that's an elected representative or somebody else in a in a public uh, position, I think I think that absolutely crosses the line. And I think people need to remember that it's not only about it's not only about us. It's not only about the individual. We have teams who you know, work with us in our place of work, and we have you know people have families, uh, and I think that's a really important thing for everyone to remember. You'd be very pleased to know I'm not going to ask you about Lee Anderson because I know exactly what you're going to say. You're going to say his words were wrong but not racist, weren't you? Uh, well, having just said you weren't going to ask me, I mean, yes, I do think what he said was wrong. I mean, I think it was deeply, it was deeply personal, uh, and he shouldn't have and shouldn't have said it. Mm. And a final thought about uh, Dame Esther Ranson. We've got her daughter on the programme yes. a little bit later on. Um, she thinks uh, the, the laws in this country are a mess, uh, and as you know, she feels that she needs to go when the time comes to um, end her life at Dignitas. What are we going to do to try and sort this out? The, the, these are these are the most sensitive matters, of course, and you're talking about people, uh, individuals, and their families and loved ones in the, in, in, the most, didn't you? in the most in the most. Well, I'm very happy to talk about what what, what I've done, but look, I'm I'm think I'm, I'm here on your program as a, as a government minister, and I wouldn't want to see, I wouldn't want to give any uh, indication of something as was representing a government view. These are not matters that are opined on by the government. These are parliamentary. Decisions that what's called conscience uh, issues uh, and are not uh, are not whipped, and I think that's the right way. That's the right way to do it. By the way, it's another great strength of our representative liberal democracy. That not all representative liberal democracies have. They are very sensitive. There will be a respectful and important debate as and when any of these quest these questions that. come I, to the I floor of the what, House of Commons. But absolutely. But but my question is, well, you, why I mean, have you reached your view? Well, look, you you can see my as a, you know you you can see my voting record, and yeah. and I I've decided that although in the in, in the past when these votes have come, I've decided that although uh, uh, as I say these are almost unimaginable decisions to be in, and and you must have absolute respect for the decisions that people make. Uh, I decided at that at that time that I did not think it was right. Uh, 
at that time for a change in the law, but that is not that is not me representing a government position. No, You've asked me but directly. I'm your You've view. asked me directly about why I voted in the way I did. Yes, I did, and I also wondered what you would say to um, Dame Esther, given that she feels that it's a mess and it needs to be sorted out. Well, I have entire respect for Dame Esther and her and her and her entire family. I mean, in her obviously extremely, extremely difficult situation and, by extension, their extremely difficult situation and being able to talk about some of these, uh, some of these issues uh, publicly, I think, does a great service to, uh, to, to, to public debate. But there will still be a... It, uh, you know, as and when any such vote uh, comes, to the, comes to the House of Commons, there'll be a respectful, a respectful discussion and consideration of the issues... Mm. On, you won't on, change on, your mind, from, then. ..from all perspectives. You won't change your view, though. Well, I can never say I can never say for, for sure because that's the way that that's the way that we have democratic decision making in this country. I've told you what what my um, I've told you what my thought process has been in the past. These are not government decisions; they are for individual members of parliament to come to a come to a decision of, of conscience. Okay, it's good to see you, Minister. Thanks for Thank taking you. the time. Very much appreciated. Thank you.